Welcome back to Moons of Madness. Last episode, we checked out the secret base that Dr. Volkova had. Now we're checking out... I think this is another one of Volkova's secret bases? I don't know, it's the Icarus floor. It's the floor below the one we were just at. The bottommost floor. And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what this floor is all about, but let's check it out. Vines. There really is nothing quite like an atmospheric fan with a light pouring through the open spaces in it, is there? <laughs> There's vines up there too. I sprinted over them or I think I would have died. Oh my god. That's an Whoa, that's new. <laughs> I don't think it can reach me here. Huh. Oh shit, this is a bad idea. Mm. Oh. I don't think there's anything actually in here. No. What are those? Jesus. Orochi has leverage on everyone. Your request. We've obtained the files requested and placed them onto this console for review. The files include detailed avenues of leverage against the Invictus crew. If there is need to put into place additional surveillance measures, we are prepared to do so. We wish your visit a pleasant one. And then one for members of the crew. Oh. Those are the files. Things that they can leverage against us. I wonder what they have against us. First, Volkova. At age 27, Dr. Ina Volkova was directly involved in Avaria v. Krychev, which gained significance internationally as the incident at Krychev. For several years, she had worked at a decommissioned military airbase a few miles outside of Krychev, Belarus. Thousands in the small city were killed by an explosion at the base, an explosion meant to cover up a horrific containment breach of an alien substance being used in her research. The high-profile trial uncovered several classified experiments attributed to Volkova, with high-ranking officials within the government denying knowledge of her research. Before a verdict could be delivered, Volkova fled Belarus and claimed asylum at the Russian Federation Embassy in Tokyo. 
Stationed at the embassy, exiled in extradition, Ina was unable to continue her research. We offered her the opportunity to work without constraints. She accepted under the terms of the strictest NDA and forced return to Belarus upon disclosure. With her ethical integrity, uh, while her ethical integrity is questionable, her skill is undeniable. Recommend vigilant surveillance and determination of trust upon results. Let's save our own file for last, shall we? Let's look at Josephine Wilcox, the commander, right? First Lieutenant Josephine Wilcox, Special Forces, Distinguished Service Cross, received 2052, 2055, Court Martial Determination. Later in 2055, Dishonorable Discharge. Record commuted, evidence expunged. What happened? Commander Wilcox resigned her post as of February 22nd, 2055, retaining her exemplary record and citing personal reasons for her exit. As per our contract, Wilcox began employment at our California-based Manticore facility under the strictest NDA. Record of Discharge al Mawit, Yemen, July 15th, 2054. Friendly fire incident reported. Six undercover agents killed during strategic raid of suspected uranium smuggling operation. Wilcox-led uh, led team suffered zero casualties. Facility neutralized. Alpha Camp, al Mawit, Yemen, July 17th, two days later. Inciting incident of Commander Wilcox court-martial proceedings. Multiple witnesses. After brief altercation, Josephine Wilcox discharged a pistol at a range of less than one meter, causing a perforating wound into the skull of commanding officer Major Corey Houston. Wilcox turned and fired a second and third gunshot, which entered the chest and shoulder of Captain Alan Sheffield. Before team members could advance and pull Wilcox away, another two shots were fired, critically wounding Captain Jaden Allen in the thigh and groin. Final shots were discharged into the ceiling as officers on site wrestled her firearm away and detained her. Major Houston and Captain Sheffield died immediately. Captain Jaden Allen died in transit to medical facilities. Video evidence of the incident is retained at control. Her squad defended her actions, echoing the sentiment that the officers in question knowingly caused a friendly fire scenario through mismanagement. Commander Wilcox will receive no punitive action for these events so long as we exert our influence. Declan Delapore. Master in Mechanical Engineering, Minor Linguistics, California Institute of Technology, 2054. Mm, incident. Offense trafficking in heroin. Possession of controlled substance. Invil involuntary manslaughter. Sentence five years. Five months served. Declan Delapore has a history of substance abuse, having self-admitted to rehabilitation centers twice. His court sentence closely coincides with divorce proceedings, which were finalized in 2048. On November 13th, 2049, Declan Delapore was admitted to a mental health facility for evaluation after an attempted suicide. Orochi recruitment has confirmed that Delapore has remained clean for over 12 years as of January 1st, 2062, during which time he completed his degree with honors. He has experienced significant difficulties upon graduation due to his incarceration, and Orochi's offer of employment has been contingent on his willingness to maintain secrecy. Delapore is a highly motivated individual, and Orochi has made arrangements to erase records of his dark past. Lucas Van Buren. Oh, Lucas, what the fuck? What? Several incidents starting in 2052. Offense, violation of restraining order, sentence 30 days, psychiatric evaluation. Whoops, did not mean to leave. Weirdly enough, the next one up seems to be from more in the past rather than more in the future, unlike the others which are more in the future. Final restraining order, Abigail White. Temporary restraining order, Tia Anders. Final restraining order, Mary Richardson. Hmm. Kind of getting a feeling that Lucas is a creep. That's restraining orders against three people? Yeah, three people. Okay. Dr. Van Buren's psychopathic tendencies were well documented during youth therapy. Lucas displays difficulty reading emotions and a lack of empathy for others in social settings. It notes that he was admitted to therapy after his parents discovered him performing a vivisection on the family cat. Okay, they're a serial killer. Or, you know, would be. Dr. Van Buren's contributions to the field of philology are vast. His dedication helped trace the evolution of Central American language to its origination point. 
Most recently, has helped translate Orochi's newly discovered ancient texts and star maps. Orochi has maintained surveillance evidence of Dr. Van Buren's activities during the disappearances of Abigail White and Tia Anders in 2054 and 2055, respectively. The videos show Lucas violently kidnapping and assaulting the women in his home, choking them until they suffocate, and then mutilating the bodies and disposing of all evidence. Okay, not would-be serial killer. Current serial killer. The chances of a violent altercation are slim, well within acceptable risks, and Dr. Van Buren has seen the recordings. He will accept any assignment given with no questions asked. He is our most leverageable asset. Well, I'm not sad that they died. I just hope they really did completely die. If they come back as a monster that I have to kill again, then I would relish the opportunity. So, what about us? Minor childhood trauma documented by licensed family psychiatrist, fear of abandonment, mild social anxiety, graduated from Brown, 2046, GPA 2.9, PhD Miskatonic, uh, PhD Miskatonic, Mechanical Engineering, 2052, of particular note, created a practical equation to explain the theoretical underpinnings of Yang Mills and the mass gap in his sophomore year. The apocryphal claim is that it was made in a single weekend. Otherwise unremarkable. Dr. Newert is key in our understanding of Cynthia Newert's studies and possible whereabouts. I recommend continued surveillance of home and office. Potential asset for leverage if Newert ever re-emerges from isolation. Recommend hiring at local Manticore office, engineering position. Accept all salary requirements. Push for more information on Cynthia Newert. So basically we're clean. We're the only one clean in the sense that they don't have anything against me really. Not to say that everybody else is a bad person. Like, for example... Um... It sounds like Josephine, in particular, definitely. It sounds like they, I don't know if they did the right thing, but they certainly didn't do the wrong thing, killing people that were involved in intentionally getting their own people killed. And Delapore. I don't know, but I don't think they're bad. On the other hand, Volkova, yes, and Lucas, very, very much yes. I just know there's going to be a point where I run from these things. I'm just wondering when it's going to happen. <laughs> oh, these are some of the artifacts. Radioactive material. Is this some sort of generator thing? that? 
Oh my god. What is that? It's a lump of vaguely human looking origin. Looks sort of like a fetus that's. that's really heavily mutated. Jesus. You in viscera. Get out of my head. You couldn't crack open your helmet like a walnut. <laughs> and my voice is shit. Find a way to use the elevator. cut somebody's hand off to use the door pad. The door pad? What? To use the scanner. Oh great. Wonderful. <laughs> Every new room is like so spindle assets to Orochi. Wasn't enough to know all our secrets. They can't leverage us the just replace us. <laughs> Every new room is just like, what new, horrible, incredibly unethical and disgusting experiments have they done in this room? What interdimensional entity have they pissed off here? Contingency protocol. The Icarus Project is authorized to enact a contingency plan in case of unforeseen circumstances that may put the Invictus crew at risk. A replica of the individual will be made and preserved until a severe violation has occurred. Severe violations of company policy include the following. Unauthorized transmissions of operations information to an outside source, regardless of content. Verbal threat of intent to control or sabotage mission objectives or company equipment. Homicide. Witnessing a hom... Witnessing a homicide? Witnessing a homicide is a violation of company policy? Sustaining a fatal or crippling injury. Witnessing the retrieval or release of cloned subject. Okay. Please review proper safety guidelines before retrieval or release of cloned individual. Discretion is of the utmost importance. Failure to follow protocol guidelines will result in immediate termination. Okay, well this makes me think of two things immediately. One, we are definitely like 100% for sure going to meet our own clone. Second, maybe we are our own clone. Cloning successful. Yep, cryostasis active for... All of us. Organic tissue shows no sign of deterioration through advanced aging process. Memory implantation through nocturnal brain scan completed. Yeah, there's even... They even copy our brains into the body. So this this could totally be our cloned body. I think even we literally wouldn't know, right? Ah. <sighs> It's all of 
us. The entire Invictus crew. Are we the originals? The copies. And there's me. Experiment 279, Project Icarus. We are experimenting with the substance slash phenomenon slash entity oftentimes called the filth, what Dr. Volkova refer, uh, prefers to call Z-Path. Each sample tightly contained and weakened with a particular regimen of radiation, as per the Icarus protocols. The goal of this experiment is to see if the effects of this preternatural contaminant are the same on cloned human tissue and cloned hybrid human tissue as on normal human tissue. If the effects are not the same, how do they differ? Today we applied minute amounts of the filth on cloned cells using the safety protocols and observed. Effects were largely similar, with the molecules of the contaminant attacking the cells. However, the process moved more slowly than observed before. The filth has escaped. I've sealed my safety suit and performed all the emergency protocols. I've injected the radiated serum as outlined in the procedures. The side effects are intense, but mundane, and far better than the alternative. How did this happen? There was no breach. I think the theory that the filth flows, even undulates along dimensions outside of our perceived three, may have merit. I've sent for help. I'm trying not to panic. I'm recording the findings this mishap affords. The voices continue. I ignored them at first, congratulated myself on my rationalism, but then the voices learned to mimic my voice, and I thought they were me, and I was the voices. No, that doesn't make sense. The radiation must be working. My limbs have begun to do things on their own, but only when I'm not looking. I have to stare at my limbs very carefully or they misbehave. I've made a careful regimen of making sure to not look at any one body part for more than seven seconds. I have to keep watch on them. Except for my right arm. Good arm. I'm a scientist. Scientist. Cut off arm today. Right arm. Good arm. Only uncorrupted part. Pristine. It will be pristine forever. Stored good arm in the morgue. Code 9510. I'm scientist. Will lock myself in padded room. <laughs> Everyone is safe, scientist. <laughs> well, at least we don't have to do the cutting off to get somebody's finger, finger slash palm prints. Uh, I have to actually memorize the code, don't I? The game doesn't do it for you. Nine five, one zero, nine five ten. Something is definitely going to chase me on the way back. I take that back. That was a much shorter journey than I thought. Oh, fuck. I don't know if there's anything in this one. <sighs> mm. 
It looks hilarious sometimes. Fuck you, you plant piece of shit. Headed monster. Hmm. Given that we've gone deep down and through shafts of rock that have been cleared out, excavated, I wonder if we're going to end up looping around to the other crew members that found that door somewhere out there. Wasn't it somewhere out there that they found that door? Please await a lethal response. What are they keeping here? Maybe I won't wait for the lethal response. I'm good, thanks. New Eden. Orochi is planning on building a city here. A failsafe. There is no escape. The dream will consume them. They are inevitable. Yeah, we saw some numbers on the excavation process for New Eden. I think it had just barely been started, just some preliminary tests, but they were planning on it. Jesus, for a second I thought that was actually counting down and that's like when security was going to get here. <laughs> Ooh. The clock is stuck on 423. Maybe important for something? Maybe a passcode for something. Meeting at 512? That's oddly specific. Hey look, it needs an access code, what do you know? Project Eclipse. Subject status. Stasis. Enter activation code for Project Eclipse Phase 2. Warning, all employees should evacuate upon Phase 2 initialization. Emergency unlock protocol will take effect immediately. Hmm. The activation code is only three numbers. Which scares me because... 423 is three numbers, and 512 is also three numbers. Jesus Christ, clean your screens. Communication with the Dreamer requires a sensory-deprived environment, even for you. Use these settings. Lighting 20, sound 100, numbing 100. Project Eclipse, sensor deprivation. Right now, lighting's at 100%, soundscape 10%, numbing agent 0%. Shutter's closed. I can't seem to interact with these things right now, unfortunately. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. Genesis 3.23 That's now the third three-digit number.
the CEO of Orochi was here. It makes no sense. On Earth, that which cannot Well, this is four it's digits. A four letter word. Yeah. I should look around for some clues. I mean, it's gotta be just the word Eden, but that's such a bad access code. For such a top secret project, you'd think you'd make something better, but it's gotta be that, right? <laughs> 